the Pearl of Great Price Lecture Series, given by Dr. Hugh Nibley. Today's lecture is entitled, The Shabako Stone Continued. The setting is this, and they're going to be united in the United Kingdom, Kingdom of Egypt. And so he begets Adam, Adam begets the Council of the Gods, they all, this is, they're all identical. Now, there are two things that are mentioned. Remember that Zamkar said, uh, many others have said, everybody have noted this, in fact, Breasted, you may have read that article in the Monist by now, that uh, this represents, is very close to the Gospel of John and Genesis, for two reasons. It, it emphasizes two things that you'll find all, of, all over in John and Genesis, namely, the word of identification. I should have brought John along. Ch John chapters 14 through 17, I am in the Father, and they am in me, and I am in them, and those that listen to us, they are in us. And so what does it mean by in us? And I am out of the Father, I come ekthehu, and so forth. These are the expressions that are used here in the same sense. And the other is the conflict, the theme of conflict in Genesis, and is the theme of, of creation. Creation especially, well, the, this is John too, the Logos, the mystery of the Word, the doctrine of creation by the Word, the Word of God, and in Genesis, God spake, and it's the Word. And it uses the very same word. It uses sephet. The Old Testament uses sephet, which means lips, sephtire, and uh, here it uses shephet, which is the very same thing, the lip, by his lips. But first, first the situation. Now we can begin. All right. The Most High God, who is acclaimed, decides to establish Tachenon here, and this is the situation in Egypt. As he is the father of Adam, and he is through Adam, and through himself also, the father of all the council of the gods. He calls the council of gods, they discuss an affair, a division, ah, oh, there's the bell, now we can begin, a division <laughs> between Horus and Seth. We'll find out that between Seth and Horus, Seth is mentioned first here, and uh, here is between Horus and Seth, but, but when he settles it here, with the, he settles the lands, he settles Seth first, Seth is the, is the, uh, is the plaintiff here. He is the one, he's always been making trouble, and that's, that's going to be a, a very important element here. Seth is our uh, Satan, of course. But the land is divided between them, and they, uh, and they, uh, the kings of the north and the south, and they're equal, and uh, this ends here, you see. He, he sends them each, to each one to his part of the hall, and they settle, let there be no more argument between you, and so forth, and uh, each one takes his place. But then he does a strange thing. He decides to give the whole inheritance to, to uh, Horus. Why is that? Why did he change his mind? For two reasons, very, made very clear here. First of all, we hadn't got to this part. He was very much disturbed. Do you know what I mean? His, uh, his heart was troubled. His heart was troubled at the fact that he had given uh, uh, the heart of Geth. Now, uh, Ta doesn't change his mind here. It's his plan. So the thing, Geb's business, remember Geb represents the earth and everything on the earth, his business is to implement the divine plan down here. And he saw that it would never work with this equal division here. Therefore he is troubled that the land was divided, that the division was equal, tell what the equal, between Horus and Set. So, what did, so Geb gave his own entire portion to Horus, his son, the son of his son, and who was the first, who was his firstborn. Well, see what the theme is here. It's priesthood and kingship as well as land. Now, the division of the land is no trouble. You notice in Israel, uh, well, in the Bible, the land is divided among the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. No controversy there. Their sons divided in the 14th chapter of Genesis. It's divided among the nations and so forth. And the children of Israel divided again. Israel, Jacob, divided among his 12 sons. And they get their shells, and that's all right. But they're jealous of one who is Joseph. They were jealous of him because he got the garment of the priesthood. We won't go into the story of the garment now, uh, but the, the kumba is a garment of many colors. Incidentally, the word many is added in the King James. It's not in the Bible at all. So the garments that had marks in it. It's, it's a long story about the garment. This is the garment which Joseph's garment, when it was brought to Jacob by the brethren to show that the lion had killed <coughs> Jacob, make him think that, uh, had killed Joseph, Jacob both wept and laughed. This is a story told in the Book of Mormon. Both was pleased, was uh, pleased and oppressed the fact that the garment was soiled and bloody, showed that Joseph had been killed, but also it showed that Joseph was alive. And he said, 
when he felt the garment, this is a very old source, it's in front of me. When he felt the garment, he says he knew it. Remember, he'd gone blind from weeping, we're told. And when he felt the garment, he knew it was the true garment of the Joseph, because we're told there was no other garment in the world like that. It was the garment that he had received from his father Abraham, and Abraham had received it from Adam, and Adam had received it in the garden. This was the garment of the priesthood of which there was only one. And when he gave this to Joseph, of course his brethren were jealous. And remember, the dreams he had, he was the king, and they all bowed down to him. You can only have one king. And uh, where did they bow down to him? In Egypt. This is an Egyptian story, too, as far as he goes. Remember, Joseph goes, he becomes the chati, he becomes the second, the second in power. He becomes the king's, the king's right hand with all his authority. He becomes a repot, in fact, which allows him to sit on the throne. And so the brethren are were very jealous of him because he came king. But you see, the, the division of the land is not the question who is to be priest and king, and there can only be one. And that's the trouble here. So he's got to give it. He gives his whole inheritance as gift. He gives it to Horus because you're not going to have a divided inheritance for one thing. This is the law, notice, the son of his son. It's the law of patriarchal succession and primogenitor. It all has to go to one because if you start dividing, them up, dividing it up, the kingship, there's going to be lots of trouble and Seth is the one to make trouble. Remember, the reason they hold this thing in the first place is that there was trouble between Horus and Seth. Uh, so this had been going on before. And Seth is the one, he, he finally decides to give it to Horus. Well, what happens to Seth? Is he mentioned anymore here? What does he do? He comes out and he, we soon <coughs> discover down here why Seth is in discredit, because he'd made trouble before. He's the one that introduces all sorts of mischief into the picture, as we see here. Well. We get this. Then uh, we hadn't read this part, had we? Then yes, uh, yes, we read this right down to here. Didn't he divide it equal? They all had parts of the land. Well, let's go on then. And uh, then it starts out with another theme. All of a sudden, Osiris theme is introduced here. And uh, Isis and Nephthys are wearing without delay. They they're so, they draw him from the water. Notice in the top figure here is a picture of men, and here's the waves of water. And you notice. Him lying on Osiris lying on his back, and the sign under it is mare, which is pool. Notice it's exactly the same like in, in Old Celtic and Old English. Mare is a pool, wind a mare, and so forth, a mare, or the Latin word for sea, mar, la mer. The Egyptians used exactly the same word that we use for a sea or a pool or a lake. So this is, it is baptized. Notice he's lying on his back, an unusual thing here. He's lying on his back, and uh, he comes of uh, the place of Osiris, here, well, at his at his water. Yes, at the water. Yes, that's right. That could be just. That's fine. Thanks. At the uh, at the water that belonged to him. Uh, M. Mawetset. Well, F. Mawetset. Where where was established anew? Well, it's all missing here. But then he goes to God. Great. In his water. Here it is again. This is the story where Seth is uh, where Osiris is overcome and either thrown into the water or drowned, as he says, says you have your choice there, by the wicked Seth. So Seth has been making trouble all along. The problem, we have the problem here. The two main problems here, you might say, are the kingship and priesthood, dominion upon earth, and will the show go on? I mean, if it's only temporary, who cares? It's eternal life. It's eternal life and resurrection. So the two themes, eternity, life, resurrection, and power and authority are the, are the whole theme of this uh, of the Shavako stone. Well, let's see, we've got anything here now that we haven't mentioned. Um, the lands were divided and so forth, and uh, well, the king in Egypt as elsewhere is the high priest, and by definition, of course, there can be only one, and the purpose of the text is to explain that, how it's possible to have one. So, uh, this is important to know, uh, how it becomes one. Uh, we didn't read this, did we? No. Uh, Uncle Horus and the land of the of the south. Then Horus rose up as lord of the land of the south, and he bound together Delit N Pen, Machu M Ren F, and he was he was acclaimed then in his great name, in his great name as uniter of the lands of the north and the south, the palace of the north and the south, and. Uh, Nebjet of the house at the place of the Lord of Eternity, and read it, and it grew upon his head. Notice it grew upon his head. Now we go up here. The 
The Weret Ka. The Weret Ka is that which has ultimate power. Weret Ka, it's usually great, greatest magic or something is translated that way. But Ka is uh, Hekau, Hekau, Weret Hekau, that which is, usually refers to a goddess, which, which is she who is most great and powerful of authority, but of course it refers to the crown. The two crowns, you see, it says they grew together on his head and became one crown. Tep F. So, so it came, Horus Pel, aha, so that Horus arose and mounted the throne as the king of both the south and the north, the sedge and the bee, and at the play and the uniter of the two lands at the temple, the Hoet, in the, in, in the place where the two lands are united there. And then, uh, Heber and Dewa, and uh, it happened, I guess we mentioned this before, that there was placed the, oh yes, there were two columns, the sedge and the, this is the papyrus, two columns were placed in front of the temple, this is always so. We have this, uh, uh, Boaz in, in the Bible, we have the two columns, which were borrowed from Egypt, incidentally, Sol Solomon borrowed those two temples, uh, Hiram uh, had them cast in bronze, uh, Hiram of Tyre, and uh, they were in the manner of Egyptian temples. These two trees were set at the door to represent the north and the south and a very famous Egyptian story from the Middle Kingdom, the story of the two brothers about the two trees that stand before the temple here and uh, they were placed at the gates of the temple, see at the gates of the house of Ta, uh, Horus and Seth they represented, Hell, they represent Horus and Seth and so the two of them were reconciled, notice the duel there, Semu and they joined together and Sensen, good old Sensen, the Sensen papyrus, the Sensen word for brother. Sensen means to embrace or kiss. And they united together, there was no more fighting between them. And they united together and became one. Sensen F, Tem Shen F, and there was no more quarreling between them. Well, that seems like a happy ending. Uh, after he'd uh, decided to give it all, after he decided to give it all to Horus. But then we find the trouble here, and uh, we come to the drama of Osiris, where he, where he has to go through through the waters of death and so forth. Well, uh, then, well, this is this goes back to the Osiris story. Here, Isis is speaking to Horus. Isis and Nephthys are speaking to Horus, and uh, uh, he says, "Se and Nedger, he's telling them, go and rescue. Nedger means grass hole. Take take him out of the water. They're supposed to raise him out of the water, and uh, and he's he's restored then because he doesn't die completely." It follows right down to the bottom of the line. Yes, they're separate, and they caused him to come up onto the shore here. Uh, separate sin, so er, to the shore. They come to the next one. It goes back to here, but it's missing. And then here at the top, now they build a temple here. This part has to do with the building of a temple. Uh, these lines, I suppose, through the they're hard to read here. Uh, Isis and Hor, yes, here we go. Uh, Isis and uh, Nephthys speak to Horus and they go and they go thou and do so and so. And this is the house of the old man. That's the where or it's Ser or it's Semsu or it's Eal, but it means the very old man, the ancient of days. And it's notice it's the old man leading on a staff and it's the temple, the house of the temple in something. Uh, and Seket means actually build or construct. See there's a man building a wall and the word Seket means to build up. Build the house of the king. Uh, Satan says it's the it's the, the, the king's castle, the king's house, but it is in so many other things as in our uh, uh, Joseph Smith papyrus, the hypocephalus, it, it's there always the house of the ancient of days. So they build the temple and things are connected here. This isn't the creation story here. Now this middle part is this drama. We'll shift over the other now, but uh, most of it's on this side anyway. This, remember, is where the millstone ground and ground and wiped everything out completely. This was the thing that kept the, the two... Uh, parts, this part from slipping around to the other part, they had to hold it down fast. But this part, of course, was hollow, and uh, so this was spared, some of it was spared. But there just seems to drama going on. Three people are speaking, the woman and Horus, uh, Isis and Horus and Seth. And they're speaking, there's an argument. And uh, Isis says something here, and <laughs> then he says, uh, it Eric, and uh, you will have joy and happiness hereafter. And then uh, one of them says to Mechen, M. Chenin, Nefer, Yer, Eh. The M. Chenin, Anek, Yer, Eh. The, well, that's strange. There's something missing here. 
the word uh, sedgem is that sedgem and sin your life shall be sweet to you is what he says here that's interesting because on this on this production it, on the others I have a number of reproductions and photographs uh, there's a there's a sign like this there which is nedjim or benner it means sweet agreeable like this it's the uh, the Johannesbaum fruit the uh, mm. what, what do we call that uh, Red, red fruit tree, red. sort of. Well, no, it's it's this looks like bean. We have them around here. Oh, those pods. Bean. Yeah, yeah well, pods no, 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 yeah, these are pods, but yeah. that's the one they use, and it means always sweet and agreeable. Your life will be sweet and agreeable. Somebody tells them, and uh, they jet so. And then he said, and he will wipe away your tears. Now there's the tears coming down from the eye. So there's some sort of a drama here. The three people are arguing: the man, the woman, and and uh, Seth, Satan. And he says, uh, "There will be peace to you, and uh, your life will be sweet to you." That's funny. That missing. Life will be sweet to you. Then he will wipe away your tears. But of course, all the rest is is missing. So now we go to the important part of it, which is the creation episode, the second half. Now, yeah, that's the way it should be. Sure enough. Oh, notice you. Here you see the, the house of the old man, bell pin, the place of the, the house of the ancient of day. Now, we come to this, and here comes, this is the doctrine, this is the theology, the theology of the creation, I guess, would be clear if it's brought more, yeah, over here, because that's where it is. We'll put it up that way, yeah. You know, notice these three are met together. Now we're going to get the theology. And this is why they couldn't read it, because it is written backwards. Uh, the, uh, it should read this way, you see, by the direction the figures are facing, but actually it's read this way, which uh, Brest had discovered. The Netsuru Heper M Ta. These are the forms that Ta bestowed upon all life and so forth. How Ta extended himself and uh, was able to put his life and his nature and his stamp upon all that was created. The gods, Heperu, the gods who came into existence in, as, or through Ta. And first of all, there is Ta, Er Setwere, Ta upon the great throne. He's, he's the first Ta. These are different Ta, you see. Then there is Ta Nun, the heavenly Ta. Incidentally, he's standing in the temple, in the shrine of the Temple of the South here. Temple, who is the father of Adam. Then there is Ta Naunet, who is the mother of Adam, who is the mother who bore Adam. And then there is the great Ta, who is the heart and the mind, well, who is the mind and the lips and the tongue, pal, of the pesitate of all the gods, whose mind and heart are in all the gods. You notice you have a matter of degrees here. You have a transmission of power and, uh, and what is it, identity? That's what you have in John. Uh, I should have brought those, I saw the, the 19th the chapter of the th third Nephi, the same thing, where he goes aside and prays. Uh, I may be in you, and you, Father, in me, and those that follow me may be in me as you are in me, Father, <coughs> and that those who follow them, their, their converts, may also be one as we are one. I say this not, not for the world, separated from the world. This idea of being in others and being identified, that's what we have here, and it's one of the keys of the Egyptian, as you know, this doctrine of identity. In what sense are they identical? Oh, what we see down here, here, uh, Nebchai, the Lord, the who begot the gods, and again who begot the gods, and this it says, this was obviously Nefertim who was at the nose of Re every day. Ah, that's resurrection. You see. He smells the flower Nefertim, which is the opening lotus, and uh, that revives life every day, the nose of, of Re the sun. Now we'll go down to the top here. Now notice it divides, it starts dividing into the two, and this is very important because everything, everything happens between these two, and you'll see in the book of Moses, we're going to get this very same thing. Great emphasis is laid on this in Moses 4 and 1, chapter 1, verses 4, and verses 38, 39, one which, which we all know by heart. But the, uh, so, it happened, you see, in, it, ready, reading is, it happened in the mind and heart. That's the hut, you see, hut, same word as our word, head, front, and so forth. And there's a picture of a heart. In the heart and upon the tongue, that the form, the yichi, is, remember that's the same word for uh, image likeness, that the image and likeness of Ta was in Tem. He through the mind, the might and the heart of Tem, established his image in Atom. 
you where great, great and mighty is Ta. It's the creation. This incident is great and mighty is Ta. When he creates something, then everybody breaks out into the creation hymn, which is a very important hymn. Our word poetry comes from that, poem. Uh, as Walter Otto showed, uh, poema, well, you know what the Greek word poema is, is to make, to make it, it means creation. It's the creation hymn. It was first sung by the muses, sung by the muses, to celebrate the creation. Remember, when the plan of creation was decided on and everything was passed, then the morning stars, the sons of God sang together, the morning stars sang together, and the sons of God shouted for joy. That's the creation hymn. We often find a reference to it, to hail God for his greatness, and uh, rejoicing overwhelmed with, uh, with joy and, and exaltation at the thought of this new creation of a new world coming into existence. That's what happened. His, his uh, mind was imparted, he, his image is in Tam, great and mighty is Ta, and they acclaim him, and because, his, uh, because through Adam it says, it came to all the spirits, the Kasan to all their spirits, as well, Sek, that's a very archaic word for Sek, not only to Adam, but to all other spirits as well, did the Ta bestow being. M kept in his heart and in the mind, uh, in the heart and in the tongue. And then we, we say heart and mind because it's the same. And then, again it divides. Then, Hepper, this isn't, notice, this isn't Hepper, but this is Hepper N. Hepper N. And it came to pass that Horus and, and uh, Jehud and Thoth were cooperated with him. There were, there were three you're going to operate then. There is Ta, you notice, Geb waits down below to take things over. Tim, Adam, is the one who transmits the seed. And, but the, at the creation, these three made the main council, Ta, Horus, and Yehudi Thoth, who, as you know, is Hermes, the secretary of the gods, the spirit, the revealer, the one who keeps all the records, the one who has all knowledge. He's the god of knowledge, the god of wisdom, the god of counsel. He's always rendered in the Greeks by Hermes, so that's where you get hermetism the source of all wisdom and so forth. So these three, and of course Horus is the sun. He's always the sun. Horus the sun, and Jehuti, who is represented in the abstract, well, so is Horus for that matter, by, by the Ibis. Ibis. And uh, we're, we're in him, in Ta, you notice. They came into existence. They were em Ta, with Ta. They cooperated with Ta and all this. Hepper in, and the authority, Sechem, Yib. No, and that's second, a very common word. You get it in the names of kings, Sekemwi and so forth, out here in the museum. It means might, power, authority, usually rendered as authority. And authority, might, and power of the heart and of the tongue were in what he did. And uh, this, again, is something that's been restored on the dot. See, this is, this is way back. It was made in 1901. This is the one that, uh, that uh, yes, it's in the, in the 15th, uh, 39th volume of the... AZ, the historic side shift, and it's breasted. And uh, since then, they made a couple of corrections, and this is one of them. It is the doctrine, it is the teaching that there should be a B there. He said, when, is the teach when it epim that he is, that ta is, em kenet chet, that he enters into, that he, well, chenet is to stand in front, to confront, to stand in front of, to be joined with, to be as close as you can possibly, use presidency and so forth, that he is in every body, that's the physical body, the cat, and in every mouth, Neb, of every god, of all human beings, of all gods, you see, of all human beings, there's male and female human beings, of all Awet, that's cattle, you see there's a cattle hook and uh, there's supposed to be a, a piece of skin with a tail on it, this about all cattle, all creeping things, you know, there's a classification of life on earth, of all gods, of all men, of all cattle, of all Keftu, notice there's a serpent, of all creeping things, of all Keftu, and all other forms of life, Anahu. Uh, Kerkat in the uh, Kerkat Her Sejimun, which according to the the plan, the, <coughs> the plan for yourself, according to the plan <coughs> and according to the order. <coughs> it was planned and it was ordained. You see. It uses this throughout the book of uh, Abraham, you notice, it says they, they, they planned and then they saw that their commands would be obeyed. And uh, that they, they both planned and then they ordered. They would plan and then they would give their orders and the orders would be followed. And that's what this talks about, 
according to the plan and according to as to what was planned. That's tell. That's probably a passive. Uh, I'll tell. Hair and according to that which was uh, wedge, wedge, cut, never everything which was was or, ordained, planned, ordained, and commanded according to his good pleasure. Then everything merit it as he as uh, as as top these it was all according to his pleasure now the uh, so we have the heart and the tongue acting here and this is very important because remember we read here uh, you know by heart in the fourth chapter he says uh, uh, in Moses at the beginning he talks about the creation and this is very important because this is the famous logos theology that baffles everybody and there's no need need to be baffled because it's wonderfully clear in the book of Moses one and four uh, the Logos, that's the word, you see. Logos. <laughs> Remember, the book of John starts out in Arche, in Logos. Uh, in the beginning, in the Arche, remember we said the Tarpandrian Nomos Reus to begin with, was the Logos discussion, counsel, word, can mean all those things, reason, mean everything you want. <clears throat> and the book of Genesis begins the same way. They say this, they always refer this to Genesis and John. Genesis begins in the beginning. But that begins Bereshit, which is Joseph Smith says in the Council of the Gods. That's what it was. They, at the beginning they, they call out the Council. Uh, Bereshit, Bara, he separated and so forth. The, uh, well, there was this Council and the discussion. Well, what's the mystery of the Logos? Well, he tells us here what it is. Notice, <coughs> he says right in the fourth chapter, uh, fourth verse here, the first chapter. <coughs> I will show thee the workmanship of mine hands, but not all, for my works are without end, and also my words. They never cease. They're the works and the words. They always go together. And then he says here, we all know this one, and as one earth passeth away in the heavens thereof, so shall another come. And there is no end to my works, neither to my words. The works are never without the words. It's very interesting. And the next verse, the one we all know, 39, tells us why they must go together. Behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. It's to pass it on. Glory, God is intelligence, and it is shared intelligence. Without the words, there's no glory in a vacuum. The whole purpose of the word, what is the purpose of the word? It is not mystical, and it's to communicate. The word is to communicate. It's to pass on. It's to share it with others. That's what he's doing here. It was in his heart. And he brings it up in the council of the gods, and they're able to share it, and it's through the word that this happens, and it's literally true. This is going to tell us how that happens. The, incidentally, the psychology of the word is going to be explained very clearly, very vividly here, in a passage quite close to one in the Sefer Yetzirah. But let's see what he says here now. Uh, then, oh, uh, let's see what the bottom line, let's see if there's a continuation here. As everything was done as it pleased him. No. Then, we go down here. Uh, the Pesitic. His counsel was in his presence in as. His counsel, now those counseling with him, the whole counsel, knows the whole passage, was in, you notice it's drawn as a circle, and it's always drawn this way, as a circle divided in two, because this is important. It represents the two sides of the argument. It's, it represents yin and yang, and it's always represented this way, and that's what this has here. It's on stone, uh, but it has very faintly, it has a line through the middle here, the, uh, the passage. And this council was in his presence as his heart and as his lips, as his teeth in his mouth, see, to make enunciation possible, and as his hands. There were two aspects, the begetting, uh, and this is as his seed, the begetting and the formation. He, remember, uh, as what's his name says, of Adam, Herzog. Er, schaffnis, er, he doesn't create, but he begets. But both belong here. This is both creating and begetting. Uh, Yibech, uh, Yibech, it's written phonetically here. Uh, Yibech and Sepet, the, the word for teeth and the word for, for lips. Same as in Hebrew, as I say. And here's the two hands. Uh, and Adam was the agent through which this was done. Adam, you've, it was, and Kepper through him came the council, came all the gods, and Tim, M to it, F, and uh, M through Jebat, by his begetting, phallic symbol there, by his begetting and by his fingers, by his shaping that. By. There is a literal laboratory procedure going on here. Uh, it's written Jebat, G Jebat. That's picture, picture of three fingers. Has to be plural because there's more than two fingers, you see. 
So, M. Jeba F. with his fingers. And certainly, Jeba is the same word that's used in Arabic and Hebrew, so that's convenient. Uh, and Jeba F. And the, uh, and the Council of the Gods, they become. Now, can you lift this up? This becomes rather important here. Uh, not, well, yes. They are as his own teeth and as his own lips in his utterance. And as things were brought forth, much ere he pronounced the name of everything as it came forth from Shu for the benefit, or from Shu and Tefnut. Now, Shu and Tefnut are the Egyptian Adam and Eve. They're the gods who come down, those particular ones who come to beget the human race. But you notice in Genesis, a very important thing is that the animals, we mentioned the elephant, the animals are brought to Adam and he names them. Remember, he names everything. And as he names it, remember it tells us in Genesis 2, as in the Pearl of Great Price, God brought these creatures and things before Adam so that he could give them a name, so that he could classify them. And if any of you have read the, the um, what's his name? The, uh, uh, the psychologist, I'm going to say, uh, oh, well, I think it's in a second. Get all gummed up this way. Uh, but he, uh, Lieber Strauss, uh, you read Lieber Strauss, who's revolutionized the study of, of primitive man in our time. Okay. Uh, the uh, Lieber Strauss it shows that what the primitives do better than anybody else is classify. They're marvelous classifiers. They're able to remember. They know hundreds of types of plants and animals that they're, the people that go to study them have no idea about. They know far more than the people that come to study them. Uh, as you find in Levi Strauss, I was thinking of the earlier one who was also hyphenated, who wrote on the same subject. But Levi, Levi Strauss is your man. Well, he brings them, and they're all named as they come forth for Adam and Eve. And, uh, well, not, I should say shoe and definite. They're, they're our parents here. And then... And then the council brought forth the seeing of the eyes, see the two eyes, the hearing, the sedium of the two ears, the onachi, onachi, or messagery, either one, the senef, the snuffing, sesenef. Notice our word snuff, sniffle, snort, snout, and all the rest of it, snout. All those nose words. <laughs> well, they're international, they're universal, the same thing in human uh, Nesfu, Nas is, is breath, and Neshef in Hebrew, Nesfu in Arabic, Dikanafs is uh, if you have a uh, hard time breathing, like flu or something like that. And notice, and the breathing of the nose, that's a picture of the Shnazola there, and uh, of the Fenish, there it is. See, the breathing and the breathing of the Fenish, Fenish, which is the word for nose, and there's a sail with air in it, which is signifies breath. <laughs> So notice there, this is the opening of the mouth ordinance, which is always performed when one receives an Egyptian endowment, whether it's coronation, whether it's initiation, whether it's going through the temple. The first thing, you have to be washed anointed. Then you go through the opening of the mouth, in which you're at first with water and then with oil. You touch your eyes that you may see. It starts out called the opening of the mouth. It begins with the mouth because you must breathe and act first of all. It's the most primitive of all organs here. Many primitive creatures are nothing but mouth, as you know. <laughs> you don't need eyes and nose so much, but mouth you've got to have if you're going to live. Well, they call it the opening of the mouth anyway. Your, your ears that may see, uh, your arms that you may smite evil and all this sort of thing. They go through that. Uh, Eighty-eight cases of that were collected recently by Eberhard Otto and a great collection of texts. See what this opening of the mouth was, a very important part of the temple. Was to, and it's the same thing that is performed in the, in the, Jewish, the old Jewish... Uh, uh, the old Jewish uh, funeral, big words like funeral, uh, when the, uh, the rabbi strikes the old-fashioned, he strikes the corpse on the mouth because it can no longer speak the eyes because they no longer see the ears. Because, you see, we're told when Adam was cast out of the garden, uh, he, uh, when he was dying, he sent uh, Seth, and Seth and Eve went back to the garden to get the oil of anointing that would anoint his eyes, ears, nose, and so forth, so that he would not lose their function, so that he would, so that he would not die. They were met on the way by an angel. This is a very well established. You'll find this in your, in your R. H. Charles book. They were met by an angel who told them they couldn't have it yet until the Son of Man came with redemption. They couldn't have this ordinance, and so they had to go back without the oil, without the oil of anointing. But it was to uh, reverse the order, you see, of death. But when... At the funeral, the rabbi strikes angrily, strikes the ears because they won't hear anymore, the eyes because they won't see anymore. Well, these were the blows of death inflicted by Satan. He had to learn, Cain learned them from Satan. That's a long story. But these things are all related. You'd be surprised how they tie them together. But the seeing of the ears, and now here we come this interesting psychology. 
You notice these are the sensory, these are the perceptors. We get our knowledge of the world from them, suppose you know it, doesn't it? They just come in as, uh, as electrical impulses, is all they are, just a form of energy. We have to form them inside when we get them. They come through these senses, but you notice the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the, the nose, they do not give out. They do not project. They only receive. They come in and it's locked in you. You have your private universe. You're, you're a solipsist there. What do you do? Ah, it's only the word by which you can communicate this with others. That's why the word is so supremely important. Uh, what I see, I do not, well, you do some, but not notably. You do not radiate from your eyes. You do not project sound from your ears. Uh, smell, taste, and the other things. You cannot communicate them with others. The only way of communicating is through the word. There is no end to my works or my words. So words means communication with everybody else. And when the Lord says his purpose is to share his glory, my work and my glory is to bring about the immortality and eternal life of man. He wants to share it with everyone. If the glory of God is intelligence, it has to be shared. He wants it to be, and this is what it is. Glory is shared intelligence. <laughs> and it's done how? Through the word. So there's no mystery about the Logos. They make such a big secret of it. There's been more. Remember, Faust starts out, second part of Faust, he's, he's reading the Gospel of John, and he says, Im Heiligen Original and the Holy Original, and Im Anfang, da, 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 so, though that won't do in Anfang with her. In Anfang war die Tat, he says, with the deed. That sounds much better. So this brings them both. Here is the deed, the fingers, and the word. They go together here. Here's the Jeba, and the, that's the, uh, here's the tongue here. This is the tongue, you see. And uh, the, uh, so the word is very important come out here, and what are we doing here now? Oh, yes. And this is what happens. Notice, Sagar, they cause to mount up. Notice, here's a pyramid like the, like the oldest stone building in the world, the pyramid at Saqqara, that magnificent pyramid. It's marvelous. The first stone buildings ever built, and the others around it were built at the same time, are some of the most beautiful and perfectly preserved buildings in the world. They're magnificent buildings. They're the oldest stone buildings we have. Nothing primitive about them. Well, anyway, this is a double a pyramid, a double stairway leading up, so that they may cause, cause to, they might cause to round, mount up our Allah, see that's the universal Semitic Hebrew Allah to mount up, to go up, Arabic Allah, El Al, you know, the airline, uh, cause them to mount up to the heart. Now, these impressions that you get from the eyes, the ears, the nose, and so forth, these are conveyed to the heart, mount up to the heart, conveyed to the heart, uh, and, to, and the heart in turn Passes them on, conveys notice here's dead, dead, twice. Passes them on to what? Ter, to go forth to the Arek. They go forth to the Arek. Uh, and the Arek is a wonderful word here. Arek, it means, the original word is bind. That it means, notice the determinative here is a, a piece of rope or cloth, because it means to bind. Therefore, it means a covenant. Therefore, it means a sacred word. Therefore, it means comprehension. It means the last day of the month. It means anything binding. It means uh, the ultimate declaration. Here it would be the final structuring of things. Arik is putting everything together. It's very interesting, the, the Arik is, in Arabic, it's the end of the world. The, uh, in the, uh, on the Dome of the Rock, if you've been to the Dome of the Rock, you know the big mosque with a silver dome on it was the holy one. That's the end, it's called the Ar Arka. Uh, it's the end of the world. That's, that's where you take off for the other world. They use the same word as the, the Arik. And, uh, and this forms, form, will formulate, that's a good word for it, will formulate everything for the tongue to repeat and set forth. Weha means to repeat, recite. Now the, the tongue can convey it, you see. The heart, you, first you have to receive the impressions. Now that's good psychology. Then uh, it enters into the heart and mind of the thing and it receives a particular form, it has to be handed on, and then it has to be put in a, into comprehensible structure, and then it is conveyed by being repeated by the tongue, the kahat yebes, what, was, what has been thought by the heart, is repeated by the tongue. Um, and so the gods were all begotten, and Adam was begotten, and he begot them too, and uh, along with them. Both Adam, this applies to both Adam and his creatures and along, all the gods, along with them, that sacred head. And all this happened through the divine command of God in what he thought out in his heart, in his heart, and in his, yes, we got the right number here, yes, the, uh, 
Yeah. Yes. In his heart, what he, and which he, which he commanded by his tongue. Notice, which was conceived in the heart and uttered, commanded. Jua means juta, means it was commanded. Others say that's a command, an order. And was commanded by the tongue. End of sentence. New particle begins here. Uh, then he considered the, uh, so thus it was he made the spirits the colleges of the spirits uh, uh, as or and then this is the name of the ruler of uh, it's a it should be remained left as a proper name uh, Kenan uh, the uh, as the ruler and he begot the well Hemet and these are the Hemsetu spirits and these are the Kenetit. This means those who are preordained. Kenet means to preordain, to set apart, to, to have a purpose for, and this is the female of the same thing. The Chesmet spirits, these are the female, those who are to beget children, those to come forth and beget children. These were special spirits. He set forth the spirits of these two classifications, those to the Hemsret, these are the Hemsret, and Satan has a long, long, long essay on them, so what they were. These were the feminine, of course, that's the symbol of the Lady Nut, the first mother, the one who came to Egypt and so forth, and uh, her, her two arrows. And this other one here, this, uh, uh, the M goes along with it, incidentally, uh, the Metinu. Uh, the Metinu means those designated for life and all those designated to beget children. Uh, then, Yer uh, Ergifu, Having provided them, he, having made these, this is the last step, he gets the spirits ready to come to earth. Then he created abundance of supply on the earth for them. Jifal means all manner of food, all manner of substance, and uh, anything you need for, for life. The earth was richly provided. Adam, we have made for you this earth, provided with everything. Uh, Hedip, this is uh, food offerings, offerings, this is everything provided in general. This is more specific. Ketup, food spread out, every type of it. Uh, and met it, ten, year, uh, by, and uh, met it, ten. Now this, the division here, and met it, ten, by his counsel. This ten is, uh, is a this. It looks like ten, you plural, but it isn't. It's the old archaic ten. Uh, demonstrative, singular, feminine. So watch that carefully. That's a tricky one. Uh, by this council. <laughs> then an interesting thing happens. This being done, notice he has provided the spirits should come last of all. Then he has equipped the world to make, to give them all they need to live on. Then he says he proceeds to give them a law. Now this is why the whole thing is being done. It must have a purpose here. Uh, year N, he gave this law. Namely, whoever does Notice, you can raise it up a little here now. Merit, notice there's a person saying, merit, that which is lovable, that which is desirable, that which is of good report. A good definition of what is good, who does well, who does good. Merit is anything that is lovable, is a desirable. So notice it divides it in the middle again. He shall receive, to him shall be given, anech, shall be given life, in care, ketep, with eternal happiness and salvation. In care, means bearing, uh, it means so many things, you know, it means peace, it means salvation, it means, well, they just used it for food up here, and uh, this will be granted to whoever does good. And then right along with it, you know, so this is the law that's given to everyone, showing that the purpose of the earth is probation. To everyone who does message it, means that which is hateful, that which is evil. Uh, the word message is, is a very interesting one, it's the word that's used in, in Coptic, and the Greeks picked it up, meaning uh, the devil, message it, uh, who is the great hater, um, who is, uh, what was I going to, what, what do we call him, the, uh, well, it's the same word as master and master man, that's a funny thing, you don't want to get involved in that, I don't think that master man, that first word master has to do with the name master necessarily, it can, but message is the same one here, message, ma message maha means the great hater. Uh, the great destroyer, Apollyon, which is what Satan is, of course. But anyone, whoever does that which is hateful, which is lovable, that's very interesting. It leaves a subjective definition to good and evil. You can argue till the cows come home with all the fine print and make laws about it and so forth and legislate 
But you know what is good, what is lovable and desirable, and you feel in your bones what is evil and what is wrong. And whoever does that, to him shall be given here, here, no, it, death in a condition of hebed. Hebed, to be held back in prison, to be punished. Hebed is the regular word for crime, a criminal, criminal punishment. So this is the rule, and it divides it down the middle. A law is to be given that whoever does good will receive eternal salvation, and whoever does bad will receive the death and the due and condign punishment here. That's heaven. And so then he says, according to this law, everything which is done, all the cut, cut is any kind of work at all, cut, and every kind of chemet, that could be wabit or chemet, either one, chemet neb, is any kind of workmanship, any kind of art, science, any more sophisticated operation. Uh, cut is any kind of, of work at all, but chemet is any kind of refined work, any artisanship, and all kinds of, notice here, yirit, awi, the doings of the two arms, the mess, there's the legs walking, the messy of the two legs, the, the, the doing of the arms, the walking of the legs, the hem hem is motion, notice there's motion, of the awit, the limbs, all whatsoever. So all the acts of man, all their achievements, all their activities, their goings, their comings, the, what everything they make and their arts, and everything they do is governed by this law, uh, which shall apply to all things, which he says here. Chet nevet f, which shall apply to all things. Jewef medet en kat, kauet yip f peret m. And this was according to what he commanded, what he had thought in his mind, and had planned in, and uttered by his tongue from the middle. And year er, m, and here it is again. Uh, this is a very important saying. It's, it's uh, as if it were right out of uh, out of uh, Pythagoras, isn't it? Uh, all this law, it says, shall be the measure of all things. This, some say this, should, this shouldn't be on here. This is iot in that case, the extent by which all things shall be measured. Or if it only has one side, then it means the yimach, the measure of excellence, the measure of judgment. Uh, this is the, uh, well, say this is it simply the well-known saying, this is the measure of all things. So everything that comes to this earth is to be measured by this law, that who does good will be rewarded and who does evil will be punished. And that's why he set it up. Therefore, as Nephi said, this life became a time of probation. And that's what he's making it here, a time of probation. Um, and it applies to everything. See? <coughs> In heaven, heaven. Well, <coughs> well then, and then it happened that when these things had been said and done by Adam, and uh, been caused to come into existence by Sahepar, by all the gods, it was all in the name of Ta himself, who is Ta Chenin now. Because remember, he's Ta Chenin, these things would be transferred to the earth, where Geb will take over then, I suppose. Uh, he is now Ta Chenin. There's our picture of Ta Chenin here. <coughs> yes, pal, he was. Mes Netsuro Per En and Fitnebet. The gods called, called to uh, whom the gods caused to come forth all things from him. That's what he said. Remember, the syntax isn't ours. Pesach per nf came from him, ket nevet, yim f from him. Uh, by the and uh, by the way of food and nourishment, clothing, anything else you need. All life's necessity, pal. In among the, and we have the gods up here, food regarding everything. They like to repeat all the time here. Everything which is beautiful and good. Then he found and he understood, it was found, Gemto, and it was understood that all this was by the great might and power of Ta, the A Pehui F. You, you see that in the name, number of names out in the, in the museum, you know, Pehui, the two lines, it means might and power. Uh, through the council, it was through the council, but it was Ta who did it all, uh, and after he had completed this and he saw it, looked upon it all, he saw that it was good. And as say, Sato points out, he says, this is exactly what it says in Genesis, remember? He looked upon it and he saw that it was good. And when he completed everything, he did the same thing, and he says it's just the same things we find in Genesis here. He, uh, oh, when he saw all things, 
by produced by his word, which was produced by his word, and which was brought, notice produced by his word, but brought forth by the gods. Year enough. Then he proceeded to the gods proceeded to establish cities on earth. Now they say this is to be translated down to earth. We got to get civilization going here. It's translated to earth, and this is a picture of three cities. It's plural, it seems to me it's always plural. And it's the city symbol, because cities anciently, like Rome, was Roma Quadrata, divided into four parts, and that was a part of the mystery. It all goes back to an early uh, sacral ceremonial center when you have to be boxed to the compass. Well, we still do in Utah, remember? North Temple, South Temple, everything is gauged according to the temple. And the temple itself must be very carefully, Brigham Young was very careful about this, very carefully boxed to the temple, because it is a scale model of the universe. Everything counts itself from the temple, and we do here. It's a Eurocentric society, the last on earth probably now. But that's what they have here. And the, uh, the, he created the city, and he caused Garrig in it, and he caused to be constructed, Garrig is to construct. Notice the constructing is a picture of, a, of an ads, uh, chopping a board here, constructed. The fields and farms, these are fields, sepit, gnomes, sepit. Remember the Latin word septum, the same thing. Septum is a division of things. And here, in the plural, therefore, fields, gnomes, districts on earth, farms where people would settle, of course. And the NF Netero here. And then the time has come, he placed the gods in their shrines, their, their, their temples, their houses. Now we'll move it down again. Uh, then, yes, in there, and this is theirs, in their houses. Uh, Terewid and F. Pat, so he could cause to flourish there the the uh, the food offerings, the sacred offerings, the sacred food uh, of the pot, their sacred offerings. Yerig and F. Kemu, and he built the shrine, their shrines. You know, here's the three of them, you see. And he built their shrines, uh, Sen, uh, already, and their images, and their statues. He set up their statues of their bodies uh, into which which would, in forms which would please them. Then the gods entered into their temples, well, into their, into their images, to their temples, in all manner of wood, and in all manner of precious stone, and in all manner of metal, and er and all manner of stuff that flourishes upon the face of the earth. So they would establish the temples now, and then we go through quickly, Hepren, well, Hepren, Senyum, so, and then, this all being done, he gathers them all together. And here again, he summons the gods all together in the grand council of the spirits and the gods all together. And if this is called Chemu, uh, Ichem, uh, yes, Ichem, Yimek. No, this should be, oh, yes, Ichet of Ichem. It's a mysterious name, it means who is pleased the way things are gathering. And that's the name in which they met at this time the Lord of the two worlds, and he is the provider of corn for the land. This is a corn barn here, the Shenu, uh, the Shoin, the same word you use, uh, the Shenu, as, as the god, Tachen, and he supplies all the grain for the land. And here is the great throne, where the gods are united in the presence of the, at the temple, within the temple of Ta, and there's Ta's name written in the temple, and they're all there, and to hail life here, and, 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 and well, uh, in Kenneth, and there he gave life to the Kenneth, uh, well, that's all Anna, to the two lambs at that place. From this place, life goes forth to the two lambs. And then uh, the next, these last three have to do with the Osiris, with the Osiris, tra tra well, the, the baptism and the resurrection theme and the final glorious consummation. We'll, we'll put that to the next time.